Welcome to Baraton TV, here and hereafter. We are broadcasting from the University of Eastern Africa, Baraton. It is our great pleasure to be with you today in this program, What the Bible Says. What the Bible Says is a program that focuses on doctrines of the Christian church, and it's a program that explores various doctrines and we have done this, and you can find so many of these doctrines available online that we have already done in the English language and the Swahili language in East and Central Africa. And so you're welcome to search them out, listen to them. It is brief and concise presentation of the doctrine so as to give a clear understanding of what the doctrine is all about. And so we want to welcome you to this program. This program is of great benefit to those who are already believers, baptized and in the church because it reminds them the fundamentals of their faith. This program is also important for those who want to join the church through baptism and are learning what the church is all about. And so we want to welcome all of you to enjoy. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we count it a great privilege that we have a chance to discuss your word, talk about your word. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. What the Bible says about spiritual gifts and ministries. What the Bible says about spiritual gifts and ministries. Spiritual gifts are given to believers by the Holy Spirit. Spiritual gifts are abilities that believers have. These are abilities that are God-given, given by God the Holy Spirit. Believers and non-believers have talents given by God, talents. But spiritual gifts are only given to believers, only for believers. Spiritual gifts are only for believers. Spiritual gifts are abilities that God gives us so that we can function in the church and do his will and do what he wants us to do. While talents can be a source of income, spiritual gifts are for the good of the church. Spiritual gifts are varied and a believer may have one or more depending on the Holy Spirit's decision. For reasons best known to God alone, gifts vary from one person to another and even the number of gifts vary. So it's the Holy Spirit who decides. You may have one gift, you may have two gifts, you may have three gifts, you may have ten gifts. The Holy Spirit decides. And what you have and what I have may be different. It is determined by the Holy Spirit. It's not determined by us praying. You don't pray and say, I want a certain gift. No, you are given what the Holy Spirit determines. Some gifts are common at this time and others are common at another time. Some may not be very prominent now. Some are prominent at another time. It depends on the Holy Spirit. That's why we call them spiritual gifts. No gift has been rendered irrelevant over time. So there is no spiritual gift which we say it's no longer useful. It is the Holy Spirit who decides which gift is useful and which gift is not useful. The list of spiritual gifts in the three passages of the New Testament are varied. And we are going to read the three passages which have got all the gifts of the, of, the, of the Holy Spirit that are listed in the New Testament. The gifts are so different. And you know what that tells us? That tells us that this is not the exhaustive list. There could be more gifts that, in, that exist than what we have in Scripture. Our challenge, my brothers and sisters, our greatest challenge today and in the future is to identify our gifts and employ them in serving God. So you have a challenge to identify which one is your gift. Because if the Holy Spirit has given you a gift, you need to identify it and put it at work. Use it, identify it, and let it function. Because in Judgment Day, God will expect us to show that we have used our gifts appropriately, our God-given gifts. And so our challenge today, after we know that spiritual gifts exist, we now need to know which is my gift, which could be my gifts, and use them. And how do we identify our gifts? First of all, there is something we like to do 
That could be your gift. Something you like to do for the Lord. Not for money, not for praise. Not, you just like doing it for the Lord. That could be your gift, number one. Number two, it is affirmed by other people. When they say, hey, I think the best person to do that is so and so. They affirm that gift. So first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, inside you, what are you convinced that you are comfortable to do? Second, what is affirmed by others? You know, when you like something, you are not forced, you are not pushed, you just like doing it. What is that that you really like doing? That you are so comfortable doing, that you will do it endlessly and you don't feel like you are working. And second, what are others affirming in you? What are others saying, yeah, you have the gift. Yes, you have the gift. Or even if they didn't say you have a gift, they say you do it well. They always congratulate you and say, no, you did well. You did that thing well. What is it? Not something you are forcing. There are those things you force, you struggle, but those are not gifts. There is what you are comfortable doing. What is it? Those are two critical ways, and there could be more ways to identify your gifts, and you can always take time to study that. But look at those two critical ways. Because those are very obvious in our life. Our challenge is to identify the gifts and employ them in serving God. Our ministry should be driven by spiritual gifts. That our ministry, that's why we say spiritual gifts and ministries, our ministry should be driven by spiritual gifts. Those who sing should only be those who are gifted to sing. And when that happens, they will be good singing and they will never get tired. There will always be endless good singing. Why? Because the people doing it are those who are comfortable to do it. Our ministries should be driven by spiritual gifts. A church should not choose somebody to serve in a position that they are not gifted. The most important qualification is, is the person gifted to do this work? Why is that important? Because when you choose somebody gifted, that means the Holy Spirit has empowered that person to do that very thing. But if the Holy Spirit has not chosen a person, then it's a waste of time, friends. It's a waste of time. Why are you choosing somebody to do something that the Holy Spirit does not want them to do? And so when we choose people who have spiritual gifts, we are choosing people who the Holy Spirit has said, yes, I want them to do that. And so they are working with God, with the support of God, with the direction of God, and the work becomes better. We fail many times when we choose people not based on spiritual gifts. We choose people based on their age. We choose people based on their maybe schools, uh, education uh, qualifications. Maybe we choose people because of... Uh, the amount of money they have, you know, we look around the church and we say, okay, the person who has a lot of money seems to be the one who can be our leader in the church as our church elder. That is not the way. The Holy Spirit may have chosen that person to be a musician and not an elder. And so the person frustrates the whole church and gets frustrated being an elder. Why? Because the person is not functioning according to the spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit is not with him. He's all alone. He's struggling. He's now reading books on political science, reading books on leadership by people who don't even believe in God. And he's trying to apply them. Why? There is no Holy Spirit in his life. Our ministries should be driven by the spiritual gifts. When you find any struggle and difficulty in a ministry, it is because there is no God in that ministry. And one of the reasons could be that spiritual gifts are not being employed. The people functioning could be having gifts for another place, but they are forcing themselves into this place. Let's read the passages in the Bible that talk about spiritual gifts. Romans chapter 12, verse 6, 7, and 8. The Bible says, Having then differing gifts according to the grace that is given to us, differing gifts according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy. So prophecy is one of the gifts according to the proportion of faith, verse 7, or ministry, there are those who minister, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teaches, yeah, teaching is also a gift of the Holy Spirit, not everyone can be a teacher, and all of us who have gone to school know that we have met very good teachers that we enjoy being in their classes, and we have also met teachers that we don't wish to meet again in their classes, because clearly they have no gift of teaching, they came for employment, 
And we have sat under those kind of teachers. So teaching is a gift of the Holy Spirit. And then verse 8 says, or he that exhorted, or exhort, or he that exhorted on exhortation, or he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with the diligence. Yes, even the leaders, even those who encourage, even those who give, and there are those even who show mercy, do it with cheerfulness. So that's what the Bible says about spiritual gifts in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, 7, and 8. Let's go to the longer one. The longer one is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. And I want you to read it in your own time, to read about spiritual gifts. It's quite com comprehensive. The Bible says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you to be ignorant. You know that you are Gentiles carried away unto these damp idols, even as you are led. That's verse 2, verse 3. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaks by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a cast, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. That your gift and mine can be diverse, but the Spirit is the same. So you are gifted to do one thing. I'm gifted to do something completely different, but both of us are given the gifts by the same Spirit, same Spirit. The same Spirit who makes one a leader is the same Spirit that makes one an encourager, makes another one a pastor, makes another one an evangelist. The same Spirit. So we don't even need to quarrel because it's the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration by the same Lord. Verse 6, and there are diversities of operations by the same God who works in all of them. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit all. The spiritual gifts are given to profit the church, not to profit you as an individual, not to make money and pocket and you grow, go rich. It is for the church, the entire church. That's what verse 7, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says. Verse 8, for to one is given by the Spirit, the word of wisdom. Another one, word of knowledge. Those are now the list of gifts. You realize they are different even from the ones in Romans chapter 12. To another faith, verse 9, by the same Spirit. To another the gift of healing by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles. It's nine hours. Here in verse 10, by the same Spirit. To another prophecy. To another discerning spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all of these, verse 11, work that work, are the work of one and the same spirit who gives to every man as he wishes. The spirit gives to everyone as he wishes. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 gives us another list. This is the third passage. It says, and he gave some to be apostles, to be an apostle is a gift, some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors, and some to be teachers. These are gifts for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying of the body of Christ. Gifts are given to benefit the church. And so that's what we talk about, the gifts. We believe, therefore, in spiritual gifts and ministry that is driven by spiritual gifts. This is what the Bible says about spiritual gifts and ministries. Coming to you from Baraton TV here and hereafter, broadcasting from the University of Eastern Africa, Baraton. Father in heaven, thank you for spiritual gifts. We pray that you will help us to identify them and that we will deploy ourselves in ministries that are relevant to our gifting. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Baraton TV, here and hereafter.